Welcome back, tribe. I have one here from Jordan Peterson in Destiny's Debate, a section I found super interesting. Let's get into it. What do you make of the excess deaths? There are, that for related to vaccines, there are almost none. This the mRNA vaccines have been have been administered Ex to excess for deaths related in to Europe. vaccines. Absolutely. We don't know, no, no. We absolutely we don't know. know. We absolutely this is second. like what settled do science. Know? What do we know? For, in terms of vaccine related. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right? So that's not my question. Excess deaths in Europe are up about 20%, and they have been since the end of the COVID par par Sounds pandemic. Sounds really high to me. 20%? Go look! Uh, Go I'll look! Check afterwards, but um, is this including, like, the Ukrainian war with Russia? No, no, it's not including the Ukrainian war. Okay. No. What, no. Are, are you implying that you think it's because of vaccines? I'm or? not implying anything. I'm well, saying you're, you're, what the excess deaths are. But what's, now, what this, is your take on what's causing it? Well, you said that, in, and you said that in a counter to me describing mRNA vaccines. You said, "Well, the excess deaths are twenty percent." That makes sense. The implication is that the vaccines are causing well, it. Or some, to okay, it? first of all, something is causing it. Well, at that obviously, okay. yeah. something is causing <laughs> sure, it, or, or some it. combination of factors. Sure. Now, one possibility is that the healthcare systems were so disrupted by our insane focus on the COVID epidemic that we're still mopping up as a consequence of that. Wait, are these excess deaths tracing back through COVID as well? Post COVID. Just post-COVID. Post-COVID. Okay. okay. Right. They're terrifying. Right. They're terrifying. And and they're not well publicized. And I feel excess trust, are the fact that you're speaking to them right now seems like... Yeah, but I ferret down a lot of rabbit holes. It's not like it's front bloody page news on the New York Times. Sure, but I think excess... Th Can I just give, um, well, two points. One is anecdotal, of course, but a lot of what they're talking about right now is the reason Tribe Report got canceled in the first place. They completely destroyed the channel with two strikes, community guideline strikes for talking about anything related with COVID. And then two, my anecdotal evidence is I have my father and three of his brothers. So I have three uncles. So you have four men, same family, same genetics. Only one of them got the COVID jab. Only one of them have had a heart attack exactly or right around, I should say, a year after getting um, a few boosters as a follow up. The rest are fine. One, he's the one that I've talked about on the channel that had the heart attack and went and got a stint. Now he's up to a million dollars in debt. And he was the first in line to get the vaccination and a couple of boosters, I believe, two. That's just what I've had happen within my family. I have plenty of other anecdotal. I am not saying this is linked YouTube and anybody else higher up listening, other anecdotal evidence of people having injuries closely followed after having boosters or the vaccination done. I know of another individual that is young, a woman in her early 20s, 24, 25, who now has chest pains in weird rhythm in her heart after getting boosted. This person is young, active, never had any problems, no chest pains, no weird arrhythmias, nothing like that. Now gets them on occasion or has gotten them. I haven't spoken to them about this specific thing in uh, the last few months, but every time she went to go exercise or do something physical, hiking, whatever strenuous would start to feel that tightness in the chest. Okay. Uh, there's a, I mean, millions of people have cases like this, but is it a conspiracy? Is it a tin foil hat idea to just admit that there is a possibility that there are powerful organizations which donate and support to political parties across the globe with billions of dollars of profit and use that leverage to craft a message and direct legislation in their favor to gain more power and more profit? Is that conspiratorial? Or is that just, you know, human nature, the people leading these organizations? Is it possible that the mRNA technology was rushed to production in order to help end a pandemic? So it may have gotten through the process in a sped up manner that otherwise would have taken years to approve due to health risks, potential health risks, potential adverse side effects. Is it possible that we may have rushed into this head first and we were thinking more profit instead of helping people? It's widely known America's healthcare system doesn't make money from curing people, only treating them chronically for the rest of their lives. Is it possible that this mentality is at the heart of a corporation, a business, an entity that's specifically designed to extract profit from people year over year over year, pressured by the board, aka the shareholders, to extract more and more profit, oftentimes at the expense of their customers' well-being because of the pressure to make money and have a higher stock price 
on that ticker symbol, plus 2%, plus 3%, plus 80%, plus 100%. Could that be a reason? That's a, that's a metric that you can Google, and I'm pretty sure there are like three different huge organizations that track excess deaths around the world. And there are many countries. more than three, yes, sure. in every single European country. Right. Okay, well, so one relatively straightforward hypothesis is, is that it's a consequence of the disruption of the healthcare system, the staving off of cancer treatment, et cetera, the increase in depression, anxiety, suicidality, and alcoholism that was a consequence of the lockdowns, the economic disruption. And there's plenty of reason to believe that some of that is the case. But the other obviously glaring possibility is that injecting billions of people with a vaccine that was not tested by any stretch of the imagination with the thoroughness that it should have before it was forced upon people also might be a contributing factor, partly because we know that it led to a rise in myocarditis among young men. And we also know that there was absolutely no reason whatsoever to ever recommend that that vaccine was delivered to young children. So whose there, risk of death at COVID was so close to zero that it might as well have been not, zero. When you're talking about a disease, the risk of death isn't the only thing that you worry about for the disease. Also so you're talking about transmission? We're, we're, because we're, that we're was another about, thing that the we can talk COVID about vaccine transmission. pushed. Yeah, we but can, it didn't do anything we can to transmission. Talk, it absolutely did because it decreased your chance of getting affected. And do you guys remember the narrative that was moving? It was, um, you need to get your vaccination or you're endangering everybody else. You will have 100% full protection. Then the goalposts started shifting slowly. You're killing people if you don't get vaccinated. Uh, we need to lock unvaccinated people up. We need to do all this stuff to the people that no longer wanted to get the jab because they lost trust in institution. Do you guys remember that? You guys remember in California, they had the snitch hotline to tell on people that were gathering in public places? Yeah, you know, that's like the secret police that my parents used to tell me about when they lived through communist Romania. And then it went, you got 50%. And then it was like, wait a second, now you need to get a booster to keep the numbers up. Oh, don't worry, though. If you get vaccinated, you'll absolutely not catch it whatsoever because you get immunity. Oh, hold on. Now you will get it, but you won't go into the hospital. You won't go into the emergency room. Oh, wait a second. Um, third booster is now required. Fourth booster. Wait a second. We're going to have to just do this thing like we do with the flu, just yearly injections, you know, when winter time rolls around and cases start to spike. So the ball kept moving. And medical institutions that were once trusted exposed themselves to be completely inept at handling a situation like this, maybe corrupted by money and power from said institutions prior that wield it for their own benefit. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. The fact is people today no longer trust or have as much trust in the government, in medical institutions, which is unfortunate because that erodes society as a whole. Now, the next time something happens and maybe a drug does come along that works, or we have another pandemic, and this time it's a bad one that affects everybody, there's going to be a bunch of skeptics everywhere from this prior one. So they're causing, or they will have caused, a ton more excess debts in that manner, just from trust loss. They sold themselves out to Big Pharma. And it's hard to get data on all this stuff because of the amount of suppression and censorship there was. You remember how in America, hospitals were getting extra money to label people as a uh, COVID related death. So we don't even have the, we don't even have accurate numbers and it's impossible to track such a thing. We're barely now trying, but I have an article here. It's behind a paywall, but it just says, this is from Bloomberg. It says largest COVID vaccine study yet finds links to health conditions, small increases in neurological blood and heart related issues. It looks at upwards of 99 million immunized people. Again, these studies will start trickling out more and more. We're going to start finding out the truth as time goes by. The profit's already been made, and a lot of these companies, at least in America, are immune to legal repercussions. So if you try to sue a vaccine company, you actually can't in America. They're protected. It's one of the only places in the world where you could develop a product, mandate people to take it, but also they can't seek damages if you injure them in any way. It's very strange. If you have a belief that your product works, if you are trying to save humanity, if the product forcing people to put in their body is safe. Why do you need immunity from that? It didn't destroy, it didn't get rid of transmission, but it reduced transmission. Yeah, but it was your claimed that it would get rid of Only if you take one reading of one single quote, I think that oh, Biden said one break. time where he said, no, come on. I've heard so many times because I'm going to say, oh, you can't take anything Trump says seriously. Biden one time on the news says, if you get the vaccine, you won't that transmit the so disease. That is so silly. Which was a, no. Do you know that our prime minister in Canada deprived Canadians of the right to travel for six months because the un vaccinated that we're going to transmit COVID with more likelihood than the, than the vaccinated. So this wasn't one bloody statement. 
This I, was no, like no, hold on. through what government I, what policy I, What I'm saying country. is there wasn't a statement given that if you get vaccinated, there is a 0% chance of transmitting the disease. The idea is that vaccines were supposed to help Fine. because it well, reduces, it reduces we, your hospitalization, it reduces... I was trying to find that video. I don't know if anybody remembers it. Somebody stitched together all the news reports from the start of the COVID vaccination mandates to the end of it with all the boosters and, you know, the name started changing to boosters and stuff and how all the news medias were presenting like 100 percent protection, 90 percent protection, 80 percent, 70, 50 percent. Oh, but then boosters and it's like going through the chronological order of everything we were told. There's like a meme video. It's been scrubbed off the Internet. Apparently, it's impossible to find. If anybody has it, please link it to me. It's one to save for later if we ever get into this conversation again. But if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Death. And it reduces transmission, hopefully by making it so that people don't get sick or don't get sick for as long. All three of those things, the vaccines did exceedingly well. They continue to do that to this day, but especially for the first variant um, and then the Delta variant, the vaccines helped immensely here. Um, they were well, tested. The myocarditis rates are like seven out of 100,000 injections. And the myocarditis is generally acute. And it's generally not as bad as even getting the coronavirus itself, which will lead you also to having myocarditis. It's a much worse side vaccine. effect than side effects that have caused other vaccines to be taken off the market before. That, so, a but seven it, out of 100,000 rate of acute myocarditis or pericarditis is not a worst uh, side effect than any other vaccine. I think that is a completely acceptable, given that the disease itself is more likely to cause myocarditis or pericarditis. Yes, I don't totally think the data suggests to support that presupposition anymore. The latest peer-reviewed studies show that that's simply not true, especially among young men. The, the, so there is an age bracket of young men where the elevated rate of myocarditis, acute myocarditis from the vaccine, might have been higher. But we're talking about like three or four cases per 100,000 people. And again, myocarditis and are generally acute conditions. Well, they don't I told last you at for the very beginning, long. I told you at the beginning of this conversation that the progressive leftists were on the side of the pharmaceutical companies. It's not about being on the side of the pharmaceutical companies. It's about... Really? One, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, about, like, I see. So what I see, uh, what I see as the unholy part of that alliance with the pharmaceutical companies is that it dovetails with the radical utopians' willingness to use power to impose their utopian vision. Well, then what do you make Because otherwise, how that... would you explain it? Because the leftists should have been the ones that were most skeptical about the bloody pharmaceutical companies. And they jumped on the vaccine bandwagon in exactly the same way that you're doing right pharmaceutical now. Pharmaceutical companies have helped us tremendously. Yeah, throughout the... right. There we go. Fine. No, do I don't think hasn't... so. No, I don't think... That you're just wrong. I, they're you're utterly wrong. I see. So you don't think that the pharmaceutical companies who dominate the advertising landscape with 75% of the funding are corrupt. I don't, corrupt is a corrupt. very broad. No, 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 no. Why does he do that? Corrupt is a very, like just being a contrarian for what? You can't, it's, it's that, it's impossible to admit. How does destiny get into these situations anyway? This is so, like it's been common sense today. You really can't see any corruption in that kind of system that we're under today. Like at all, really, really? This guy's not an idiot. He may be a contrarian. He likes to argue the counterpoints to absolutely everything he can. It gets views. But you really can't make a link between domination of the advertising landscape, the revolving door between the heads of these companies and the institutions that were created to police them. The hundreds of millions of dollars they receive from public funding to create these vaccines, by the way, and then still charge us for a obscene amount of profit. Is that not corrupt? We pay for the research, they then charge us multitudes over and make hundreds of billions of dollars in profit. In a pandemic state, by the way, this isn't just we're researching some drug and it takes a lot of manpower and money. And instead of doing this as a, you know, what the leftists would say, the benefit for society as a whole, we all put in our tax money for the further research to eliminate some of these diseases that we have in our populations in order to build our so-called utopia of the future, I would understand that argument to make a little profit here and there during peaceful times. But this was a pandemic state. Everybody was freaking out. Everything was shut down. We had to rush drugs to the market. We have to save the society that we've built. Yet they're still wanting to profit off of this situation. OK, again, we're talking about companies that have been sued for and lost multi-billion dollar lawsuits for doing exactly the things that you would expect a, quote, evil corporation to do. Check this out. I'll just read you some of the lawsuits. These are the five largest pharmaceutical lawsuits. GlaxoSmithKline pled guilty for unlawfully promoting prescription drugs and failing to report safety information. Settlement came out to $3 billion. And remember, these are 
incredibly powerful and influential companies that do get away with a lot of things. So even what they got settled for, imagine the stuff that they managed to keep under wraps and keep the settlement this low. This is just what came out in court, what was allowed to come out. Pfizer, who would have thought? Look, there's Johnson & Johnson right after that. This settlement for Pfizer came out to $2.3 billion as a result of false promotion of Bextra, Valdecox tablets, Geodon capsules, blah, 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 faced allegations of paying kickbacks and submitting false claims to the government. Wow. So this company has a history of submitting false claims to the government. You know, the very company that was in charge with developing a vaccine for a pathogen we haven't seen before during a time of crisis. And they have a shoddy history of reporting the accurate data of its said products. OK, could it be possible that a company like this may indeed again falsify data in the clinical trials of a drug they may be rushing to market? It's just a question. I'm not insinuating anything. I'm just wondering. Johnson & Johnson pled guilty to misbranding the antipsychotic drug Risperdal. Allegations include off-label marketing and kickbacks to doctors and pharmacists. Settlement was $2.2 billion. Abbott pled guilty to criminal misdemeanor for unlawful promotion of the prescription drug Depakote for use not approved by the FDA. Do you think that do you think that pharmacy, do you think with they, a tinge of malevolence do you think willing that, to extract money out of people by putting their health on the line? Do you, you don't believe that, we, that? You think that we get effective drugs from pharmaceutical companies? Not particularly. OK, do you. So do you think that any vaccines work? Yes. Right. Which is the common sense answer. We're all vaccinated, guys, just to go to school. We're all vaccinated for you know, measles, smallpox, whatever it is. All the old stuff we're vaccinated for and they work. You got your injection. Immunity for life is something that you need to get boosted for every year, qualify as the traditional definition of vaccine as we knew it five years ago, 10 years ago, before, you know, definition stuff started changing. That's the question I have. One thing personally that I saw was that, you know, I'm not vaccinated. My parents are not vaccinated. Urge them not to get vaccinated. Everybody I knew behind closed doors, I urged them to not get vaccinated during that time because we just simply didn't know the efficacy of the drugs and how safe they were being rushed to market in the way that they were. But what struck me as extremely odd was how Congress, let me look this up just to be make sure. I found a video here, so I'll just let it play. I won't even say nothing. And when it comes to the mandates, can members of Congress be forced to get a vaccine? Our Verify team has the answers. President Biden mandated the vaccine for all federal workers and contractors with no option to get a weekly test. And some of you were wondering if this mandate includes members of Congress and their staff. Well, Brandon Lewis from our National Verify team finds out. President Joe Biden announced a vaccine mandate that would affect more than 100 million Americans at the nation's largest employers. But the one Verify viewer wants to know if that includes Congress. So let's verify. Does President Biden's vaccine mandate include members of Congress and their staff? Our sources are the White House, the Congressional Institute, and the Library of Congress. When President Biden announced his mandate, he singled out federal employees and one branch of government, and it wasn't the legislative. I will sign an executive order that will now require all executive branch federal employees to be vaccinated. All. While President Biden controls the executive branch, which includes employees of the president, vice president and his cabinet, the Constitutional Institute says President Biden has no power to regulate Congress. So it's false that President Biden's vaccine mandate includes members of Congress and their staff. Last month, 20 representatives asked the attending physician of Congress, Dr. Brian Monahan, to consider mandating vaccines for Congress and their staff or require twice weekly testing. In July, Monaghan mandated Congress wear masks inside shared spaces, but he hasn't required vaccines in response to their letter. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. There you go. Don't you think that the leadership of this country would absolutely be first in line and mandated to take this vaccination, considering we're in a time of crisis? Aren't heads of state and the bodies that rule this country legislate and lead? Would they not be first in line and the rest of us would even understand that? Like the president getting the very first one available. Vice president, speaker, members of the Senate, Congress, and House. Don't you think that these would be rushed to them right away, first availability, and then spread out to everybody else? That seems logical to me in a time of crisis when you're trying to save a country. Food for thought. Do you think that any... I don't think 80 of them work at once for babies. I, I think that's a little risky. 
but, but yet we've been on this vaccine schedule for how many decades? Like and this, don't... like this, not like this, not carefully. I had a ton of vaccines when I was a child. I'm pretty sure that was the norm for people. There were a ton of vaccines. You had There's to way it more to. now. Okay. And you think well, that- Well, you can understand why. I mean, look, part of it, no doubt. And is there a profit motive behind all of that? Do you stand to make incredible amounts of money by introducing new types of vaccinations or repurposing the old ones in a way you could extract patent rights to so that you could increase the profitability like tenfold? I don't know. No doubt part of it is a consequence of the genuine genuine willingness to protect children. But the moral hazard is quite clear. And people on the left used to be aware of this. What do you, you, make of the, you, what do you think the mRNA vaccine, the speeding up of it came from? How do you make for the fact that it was Donald Trump that did work speed? Terror, so you, foolish panicking, just like we're doing with the climate issue. So you think Trump foolish was panicking? Was he in bed with the pharmaceuticals? Was he working with the left, or was it just a dumb? That was the only panicky thing he made. He didn't try to push for the mass lockdowns like other far left people would have wanted him to do. That was just the one mistake he made was the pushing for the vaccine. No, I think Trump undoubtedly made all sorts of mistakes and lots. And it wasn't. It certainly wasn't only the left that stampeded toward the forced COVID COVID vaccine. Um, um, debacle. But it was most surprising to me that it emerged on the left, because the left at least had been protected against the depredations of gigantic predatory corporations by their skepticism of, 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 of the gigantic enterprises that can engage in regulatory capture. And that just vanished. Is it not possible that maybe people looked and they said, hey, if all the governments, all the institutions, all the schools, all the private companies across all the countries around the world are saying the same thing. Yeah. Maybe it is the case that this vaccine just helps. Is that not possible? Oh, sure. They probably, that's sure. Of course it's possible, but that didn't mean it was right. Well, who's they this? used force. Well, if, if, who, they used force. We use force for all sorts of things in terms of public health. We don't health. generally use force to invade people's bodies. How long have vaccine mandates been a thing in Canada, the United States, and the entire world? I don't think they should have been a thing. That's great. I if you don't think they should have been, but when you say we don't Geneva generally policy. use force, we absolutely use force. We use, look, we, we, okay, we've enforced look, vaccines for a long time. Okay. It's an important part of public yes, health. Fair enough. We did it on a scale and at a rate during the COVID pandemic, so called pandemic, that was unparalleled. And the consequence of that was that we injected billions of people with an experimental, and it wasn't a bloody vaccine. Of Just, course. No, it wasn't. Yes, it it was. Was. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It's not. What, because it have a 100% success rate? You think it's a definition of vaccine? Well, the whole point of the vaccine is to give your body a protein it's to train on so the immune system works. And when you look up the definition of vaccine, they've managed to reword it a bunch of times, but you'll find some of the old definitions here. It says a biological preparation that provides active acquired immunity to a particular infectious or malignant disease. Acquired immunity. Immune. That's the key word here. Immune. Not I need boosters every year. Immune. Do you know what it means to be immune to the cold? It means you never get the cold. Imagine if somebody was naturally immune to getting the cold or the flu every year. That's what it means to be immune to something. That's what a vaccine is. Now, if you start to look over at like the European Union's new definition or World Health Organization, it's a biological preparation that improves immunity to a particular disease. Now it's in, you see? The world we live in today. Who cares if it's not the same? There's plenty of there's they different used types the word of, vaccine so that they didn't have to contend with the fact that it wasn't the same technology. There are different types of vaccines there certainly that are, 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 that are different technologies. Fine. The mRNA vaccines is a type this of used vaccine to be technology. Vaccines. Now this is vaccine. No, it was like this and now it's like this. No, no, no. It was like this and now it's like this. The MNR mRNA technology was a radical qualitative leap forward in technology. Mm. You can call it a vaccine if you want to, but it bears very little resemblance to any vaccine that went before that. And the reason it was called a vaccine was because vaccine was a brand name that had a track record of safety and shoehorning it in that was one of the ways to make sure that people weren't terrified of the technology. And you know, the reason it's called a vaccine is because they're injecting you with something that's inoculating you against something in the future because it has proteins that resemble a virus that infects you. There are your overlaps system, between, between the mRNA technologies and vaccines, to be sure. But they wouldn't have been put forward with the rate that they were put forward if they weren't a radical new technology. And it's bad in principle to inject billions of people with an untested 
new technology. Isn't it and also it, bad in principle for billions of people to get infected with a worldwide pandemic that initially was causing a decent number of deaths, a ton of complications, shutting down world economies? Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe it was. So shouldn't we be able to engage in that analysis and figure out, like, if we look at the We're not engaging in the analysis. No, because now we're we're talking about whether or not vaccines or even vaccines or not instead. No, no, no. And when he says shutting down countries, that's only because the countries themselves voluntarily shut down and mandated its citizens to. Because here's an article that says Sweden's no lockdown COVID strategy was broadly correct. Commission suggests. Says the commission set up by the government under pressure from parliament said Sweden's broad policy was fundamentally correct. It meant that its citizens retained more of their personal freedom than in many other countries, the report says. But the panel of eight experts, including professors of economics and political science, said the government should have taken clear leadership and acted sooner when it comes to measures such as capacity limits and masks. So basically make sure the hospitals are ready to admit people who are sick from the virus and make sure everybody has adequate masks to lower the transmission rates. Good. Interestingly enough, figures from statistics agency Eurostat show the country had 7.7% more deaths in 2020 than its average for the preceding four years, among the lowest excess mortality rates in Europe. In light of current knowledge, the commission is not convinced that extending or recurring mandatory lockdowns as introduced in other countries are a necessary element in the response to a new serious epidemic outbreak. Moreover, the report argues that the right balance was struck in terms of education sector. Another point of this that we haven't discussed is how kids were affected. Preschool and elementary school were kept open with universities and equivalent of high schools switched to remote learning. One of their scathing attacks was literally that in a crisis, there must be no uncertainty about who is in charge. So that whole fumbling around of who here has command of the situation. Is it the health authorities? Is it the government? Is it the whoever else that we assign the World Health Organization? You know, it's like we didn't have a clear hierarchical picture of here. And there was sometimes contradictory statements being released. And then at the top of literally a Google result says uh, during the pandemic, Sweden was among the few countries that did not enforce strict lockdown measures. Instead, the country relied on its citizens' voluntary behavioral changes. Meanwhile, in America, if you didn't want to get vaccinated on the news, you were told that you were evil, that you were causing the death of people, that you should be locked up, that you should lose your freedom to travel. You should be restricted from working, lose your job, lose your business, lose your livelihood, lose your home, lose your family. You should be losing everything. You became a social pariah. And this is why people were against it in the first place. Carry on. No, 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 don't play that game. That is not what I was doing. I was making a very specific and careful case. The mRNA technology, by wide recognition, is an extraordinarily novel technology. And that doesn't make it not a vaccine, though. Well, okay, it's a radically transformed form of vaccine. I don't give a damn. That still makes it something so new that the potential danger of its mass administration was highly probably, highly probable to be at least or more dangerous than the thing that it was supposed to. Um protect against. And we are seeing that in the excess we are deaths. Absolutely not. Saying. So are you implying now that the excess right. deaths were caused by the vaccines or? I don't, it like- I don't bloody well know what they're well, that's caused by. Now. Well, the, look, if you're going to use Occam's razor, you're kind of stuck in an awkward place here. I'm because absolutely are, not stuck in an This is yes. the most administered vaccine in the hit or inoculation or whatever you're going to call it, in the history of all of mankind. Every single organization around the world is motivated to call this out if it was a bad thing. You don't think Russia or China would be screaming if Donald Trump or the United States warp sped through a vaccine that was having deleterious effects on populations all around the world? You what if we were involved in the research in those laboratories? What if we were funding the bioweapons labs? What if we were culpable in the release of said virus? What if nation states are working together while they tell the proletariat that we're mortal enemies and war is on the horizon and look at the way these commies are running their country? Meanwhile, China says, look at the way these degenerate Americans, these capitalists are running theirs, yada, yada, yada. But behind closed doors, these governments shake hands, make billions, hundreds of billions of dollars, trillions of dollars worth of trade comes between these countries where linked at the hip in the global economy when it comes to trade. You don't think that governments would maybe try to hide such research? I mean, look, this is a headline. Again, paywalls, paywalls and paywalls. Vanity Fair, in a major shift, NIH admits funding risky virus research in Wuhan. Do you see? Do you see? Revealed, Anthony Fauci-run lab in Montana experimented with coronavirus strains shipped in from Wuhan a year before COVID pandemic began. 
U.S. taxpayer money was used to experiment with coronaviruses from the Chinese lab thought to be the source of the pandemic, allegedly thought, more than a year before the global outbreak began. The National Institute of Health, NIH, under Dr. uh, Fauci's leadership, infected 12 Egyptian fruit bats with SARS-like virus called WIV-1 at a lab in Montana in 2018. The WIV-1 was shipped from the Wuhan lab, the FBI beliefs caused the pandemic and was tested on bats acquired from a roadside Maryland zoo. There you go. What did you what do you call that? You would you label that a conspiracy? You don't think there wouldn't be some academic institution? You don't think there'd be more than a handful of doctors and Joe Rogan and there some are. conservatives saying this vaccine might have been bad if it was the case that America. You don't think they would be censored, Destiny? You don't think they would be threatened by the government? You don't think they would be locked up and jailed in other places like China, like they did some of theirs? You don't think that you would be threatened with your entire livelihood, everything you've ever researched, your name would be pulled from papers, you'd be wiped away from existence. You don't think that they would pressure somebody when we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars in profit, when we're talking about the government gaining a new way to control its citizens through acts and emergency orders that erode personal liberties and freedoms. You wouldn't think that any pressure would be applied to the people that would like to step forward and ring the alarm bells on this situation. Is that is that crazy talk? Do I have a tinfoil hat on? Am I crazy, dude? Because listening to people like Destiny makes it sound like I'm I'm the insane one. Or is he just falling in line? Is he doing the thing? Has he been captured? Has he gotten a fat contract? I don't I don't know, bro. I don't know. Okay companies, working with companies in Europe and Germany, especially, right? Because that's where BioNTech is from, in order to create a ma- uh, or a manufacture a vaccine that was causing excess deaths all around the world. There are so many different people that we motivated to call this out. How do you explain that? No, it out. no, it's a handful of people. Where are the governments ah, calling it? Where are the academic a- institutions calling it? Where are the other private companies calling it out? Wouldn't you stand to make a killing if you were a private company in Europe and you could say, look, the mRNA vaccines for sure are causing all of these issues. Why wouldn't Putin? Why wouldn't Xi Jinping? Why wouldn't anybody else in the world call this out if it was as horrible as it was? There are plenty of people Maybe because they're leaked. <laughs> Can't say that. Attempting to call Nobody the- credible and no huge institution. What do you make of the excess deaths? You haven't come up with a bloody hypothesis. I don't even know if there are 20% at the excess deaths in Europe right now. If I had to guess off the top of my head, it's going to be, like you said, one might be lingering effects of an overwhelmed healthcare system. Another one might be uh, deaths related to the war in Ukraine. Another one might be rising energy costs that have happened for a couple of reasons. But it's absolutely impossible that any of it could be unintended consequences of a novel technology injected into billions of people. I think that if excess, first of all, there aren't billions of people in Europe. So if there were I excess there deaths, were. I understand, but you're talking about excess deaths in Europe. I'm not aware of excess deaths that exist in other places that are completely and totally unaccounted for where the only explanation could be the vaccine. I think if there were, I think more people would be talking about it. Well, we have... Well, first of all, the number of people talking about something is not an indication of the scientific validity of a claim. I I agree with that, but for a vaccine... Then why are you using mass consensus as a as the determinant of what constitutes because truth. I think for That's something never been the case. Because I think for something that was given to billions and billions of people, if this was something that was having a measurable effect on people, it would be... It would be impossible to cover it up or ignore it. Well, we wouldn't you... have to look at the one case right. brought up on a, on a documentary. We wouldn't have to look at the one thing being talked about. And what do you, you know, make but... of the VAERS data? The VAERS... There's more negative side effects reported from the mRNA vaccines than there were reported for every single vaccine ever created since the dawn of time. And not by a small margin. So it's not just the excess deaths. I agree. It's the VAERS data. What is VAERS data? It's the data base that until the COVID-19 pandemic emerged and we had the unfortunate consequence that there were so many side effects being reported, it was the gold standard for determining whether or not vaccines were safe. And now as soon as it started to misbehave on the mRNA uh, vaccine front, we decided that we were going to doubt the validity of the VAERS reporting system. Hey, the VAERS reporting system has never been the gold standard for anything. VAERS reporting is just if you want to report that there is some issue that you have after getting a vaccine. That's it. I think it's vaccine, mean, vaccine adverse. What the hell do you think it was set up for? To, to report adverse events Why? that happen after a vaccine. Why? To track and see if something was related to the vaccine. Right. So Why? most people, most people didn't even know VAERS existed until after the COVID vaccine. Once people know that it exists, of course, more people are, are going to engage with it. But what happens? So it's all noise. Report, no, it, well, it could be or couldn't be. So what do you do when a bunch of stuff? Well, being, you first of all might, you so, might begin when by it, suggesting that maybe it's not all noise. Correct. So when Especially all all of these the things are death. admitted to VAERS. What they do is from there, they investigate. All you can do, all of that, all VAERS is, is I might go and get a vaccine and maybe in three days ago, hmm, I got a headache. 
I'm going to go ahead and like call my doctor and, and make this report. And they'll say, okay, well, it's an adverse event after vaccine. It doesn't mean the vaccine caused the headache. And now that more people know about this than it. ever. I'm sure, saying I'm that just the saying that theirs is not the gold standard of determining if a vaccine is working or not. Compared to what? Compared to actual uh, longitudinal perspective, randomized control trial you studies. You mean like the ones they should have done to the goddamn vaccine? Like the ones that they I'm... did do for the vaccines oh, and they oh, continue yes. to do to this day. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. They, yes. You really correct. think that you're in a position. And another article here, Pfizer falsified COVID vaccine trial data data claims UK journal. This is all a claim. Again, we're not making any statements here, but it says researchers blow the whistle on data integrity issues in Pfizer vaccine trial. The leading medical journal, the British Medical Journal, cited revelations of poor practices at contract research company helping to carry out Pfizer's pivotal vaccine trial and said the evidence raises questions about data integrity and regulatory oversight. Says BMJ cites information procured from a regional director previously employed at Vantavia Research Group involved in testing the vaccine. She told the journal that the company falsified data, unblinded patients and employed inadequately trained vaccinators and was slow to follow up on adverse events reported in Pfizer's pivotal phase three trial. Again, this is all coming from the regional director, allegedly allegedly is what she saw there. Jackson provided the BMJ with dozens of internal company documents, photos, audio recordings, and emails. So again, this is all allegedly. Mm -hmm. Position to evaluate the scientific credibility of the trials for the vaccines, do you? Really? No, I don't. So I have to trust. Then what are you what doing? I, have to do, what I, have, I don't trust. I have to I trust the bloody I have data. To, you have, first of all, you have to trust third parties to some extent. When you go outside- I don't have to trust- Of course third you do. You do every day. When you turn the keys in your car, you hope your engine doesn't explode. When you're drinking water, you hope that the public water or whatever tap or bottle water you got it out of isn't contaminated or poisoned with cholera. I don't when do you that go, as a consequence of consensus. No, you, you. of course you do. No, I don't. I do that as a consequence of observing multiple times that when I put the goddamn key in the ignition, the truck started. Why do you know it's going to start the 50th or the 100th time? Why do you, how many times do you wear those? with me. I'm you know not perfectly playing well you. Why. You don't know if the denim and those genes isn't leaking into your bloodstream. To some extent, we trust, we have to trust third-party institutions Except to make determination. Except when they use force. Ex how about especially that? when they use force. We trust the police officers. We trust the we judicial do, system. We do. We, we do. on the left trust the police, do to we? To some extent, do we? If somebody's breaking <laughs> into your house, who do you call? Them. I'm not, I'm not a defunder, oh. but if somebody's breaking into your house, you can be the most defund person in the world. Who are you going to call? Are you going to call your neighbor? Are you going to call Joe Biden? Are you going to call Obama? Are you going to call the Black Panthers? You're going to call the... Okay, so, so tell me this. Tell me this then, because the core issue here is use of force as far as I'm concerned. You know? And they start to get in other topics, but, you know, I just wanted to bring this one up because the history I've had with trying to talk about it on YouTube, the strikes it's gotten for stuff you can talk about today. Uh, they've went far more deep into even the videos that I cover that got strikes on the channel. I, I merely covered a video saying that the Pfizer CEO was denied going on a vacation because he wasn't vaccinated yet. And then another video saying um, it was at a parent teacher conference or whatever. And one of the teachers was just raising questions about the secondary effects that this pandemic closing the schools down and masking all the kids up would have to their development, which you can read all about. I'm not going to even go into that. That guy's initial inclinations started being verified by health professionals worldwide. Let's just say that. I'm sure everybody has anecdotal evidence of what's happened to them or a loved one post injection. And, you know, what I find so interesting about all this is how the left has turned into the most staunch government supporters after literally being the side that doesn't trust the government whatsoever, which cites studies like the Tuskegee experiments and how the government always does wrong and subverts its people and has experimented on them before and constantly looking at ways to erode your rights and they shouldn't be trusted and giant institutions don't care about you and government at its core is only looking after itself and its own power never the people and then that message got completely flipped on its head into like essentially an extreme version of like comply or die you don't deserve to live if you don't listen to institutions you're crazy if the experts tell you this who are you to question it this is the truth anything else is malinformation disinformation how do you know something's true? Well, only because it came from us, not anybody else. That's what an incredible position to take, especially in the world today, where propaganda has never been easier to dis disseminate amongst the general public. You know, like this is the most powerful propaganda tool right here. And literally you could read a headline, just the headline alone, and that's enough for people to formulate their opinion on something. It just blows my mind that this is where democracy has headed.
and the society we're building up around it is essentially profit driven to an extreme sense before it used to be how can we make as much money but let's not try to adversely affect society that much people in general relationships the family structure and then it's just all bets are off now it's how can we make the most amount of money in the fastest time possible screw everybody else and what happens to them we don't have a shared vision into a peaceful clean friendly future with one another it's just i get mine you get yours f everybody else you know it's like stepping on everybody along the way up instead of raising everybody up along the journey up that you have sucks to see man because again this is how we end up in the situation we did today with dating, with marriage, with relationships, radicalization of colleges, hating everybody and anything that doesn't resemble you, the tribalism, putting yourself into an increasingly smaller, obscure box to differentiate yourself from everybody else at the same time causing more and more division and rift among society. And it's wild when you arrest people for stepping in to help a woman that's maybe being harassed on a bus by some nut job on who knows what drugs, that gets you arrested. You're better off not being a good Samaritan. Either film it or look away, pretend nothing's happening. And then that guy from soft DAs will get released right away, you know? Bail reform. We don't do bail anymore. Just let the guy out. We'll deal with it later. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. This is just what I got out of this portion. If you want me to cover more of this conversation or conversations like this, let me know. I know we cover a lot of dating, relationship, marriage, those little funny highlight reels of women. But if you want the topics to get broader again like they used to, let me know. And uh, I would ask for your stories after you've gotten the vaccination or how you dealt with the pandemic or what happened to your job and your livelihood, but it's probably hard to cover that stuff. And I'm assuming there's gonna be a banner under this video to get you to go to who knows what link to get accurate information regarding whatever. I have made no statements. Everything has been anecdotal. Please reach out to your healthcare professional and the health authorities in your state, city, or country regarding information on vaccines, COVID, and whatever else covered in this video. Am I missing anything else? Trust the government and your health organizations. They're after your best interest. Always verify information first and foremost for yourself by clicking on the official websites of the health authorities, whether it's the NIH, WHO, CDC, whoever else is in charge in your respective countries. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one.